Hi, everybody. It's Sandra from the Funky Pickle Thrifter. So we are going to take a look at how I might clean some of my jewelry. The first question I always ask myself is, should it be cleaned? Because a lot of people, particularly buyers, they really like the patina and the tarnish and sort of the stuff that proves its age. It's sort of a, you know, can be a controversial thing. But one thing nobody ever wants to get in the mail is something that is actually dirty. Certain things can be cleaned. My basic philosophy is start out as gentle as you can and work up to the more abrasive things if necessary. I have some silver cleaner here. This is the liquid kind. I don't use this much, but I do have a piece I want to use it on. Here's a soft bristle toothbrush. Some Q-tips. This is just plain water. And this is like kind of a, you know, it's sort of soft, but it's sort of stiff at the same time, if that makes sense. Just a little brush. I love cleaning things with brushes like this because you can really get into small areas and it's a lot safer than, you know, using a, a toothbrush, even if, you know, one that has soft bristles. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is this vintage celluloid brooch. As you can see, this has a lot of little stones that are glued in. The thing with glued in stones is through the decades, the adhesive or the glue uh, just dries up. So the first thing, just like an FYI, be prepared for these things to fall out if they do, you know, just glue them back in. But it is very common for these things to, to fall out. But as you can see, hopefully that's showing up. There is a lot of dust and I'm not going to go near where the, the rhinestones are. So I'm just going to make my brush a little bit damp and I'm going to try to go in between these spaces to get that dust out of there. Careful not to touch any of the rhinestones, just water, nice and easy. And my brush isn't that wet. Let me do a little bit right here. Very careful. So that's how I would do this one. I love this brooch, by the way, isn't that great? Such a pretty piece. Of course, you should always proceed with caution if you have fragile things like amber, opals, real pearls, turquoise, and lots of other things too. Like we wouldn't take a toothbrush to this. Uh, if I had to, I might wipe some of these down, you know, very, very gently. Uh, and of course, you don't just throw the stuff in your jewelry box either because the, these things are soft and they're very, very easily scratched. Amber likes moisture, so what I will generally do every so often with my amber is I put a little bit of olive oil on my fingers and I make sure that those are kept hydrated somewhat. Uh, and basically, uh, the other thing is I don't really like to get these strings or these threads wet, so I wouldn't usually dunk something like this. And um, like this, well, I'll show you about silver in a second. Let me just put this one to the side. And I don't know if I ever showed you this. I got this a long, long time ago. These are like beautiful opals because they have a lot of what's called fire. So I'm going to try to put this up against a light. And I want you to see like right now it's blue. It's got a little bit of pink. I see some shades of green, right? But I'm going to show you how red these are going to show. Uh, these are going to look when I put them by a light. Hold on. These have really, really nice fire anyway. I love this. I love this necklace. The other thing we always keep in mind is if you have something that might be very, very valuable, like, you know, I'm trying to figure out, I might have this brooch that's from like the 1600s or something. I wouldn't clean that at all. You know, if you have something you think might be special or valuable, uh, don't even touch it, you know, because you can ruin certain things. So here's a piece that's just all metal. This is so, so dirty. This is a Sarah Coventry. I actually love this, but it's pretty dirty. This has enameling, it's all metal. I actually would feel comfortable soaking this one. I have another little thing of water. This one has a little bit of Dawn in it. I love to use Dawn. It's very, very diluted though. But Dawn dishwashing liquid is a great thing because it cuts through the grease. A lot of this stuff is just grease, you know? It's like hairspray, um, skin. <laughs> Maybe somebody had this who smoked. So we'll just let that soak in there. What else can we look at here? 
this diamond ring is pretty grimy, especially on the sides. That's from, you know, washing your hands and I don't know, all kinds of stuff. So we will let that soak too. Diamonds are very hard. Diamonds can totally be soaked. I actually have some of this type of stuff. It is connoisseurs, but it's not for silver. It's for other things. Uh, and I would ordinarily put the diamond ring in there, but I don't, I don't know. I guess I don't, I don't know where it is right now. So we will just use some Dawn. Some people also use um, water with a little bit of Windex in it, like really, really diluted. And here is a necklace. This is not jet. This is just French jet. So, you know, same thing, slightly damp. I would just brush. There actually is a bunch of dust on this. You probably can't see it, but being careful to not really get down to that thread underneath. I wouldn't want to immerse this either because of that, that thread. It's a pretty old French jet necklace, right? Let's take a look at these. There is um, some dirt on here still. So I think I would use the brush on this, but I'm, I'm gonna be careful to not disturb the enameling. Let's give this a little bit of a bath. Now maybe I will use my brush to get inside here. This is sort of therapeutic in a way, <laughs> cleaning jewelry sure I get all the dirt out of there. This was so dirty. Yuck. And let me just blot it out a little bit and then we'll rinse it off in my clean water dish over here. Get some of that soap off. Of course I could just put this underneath the faucet too. So I was gentle. I don't think we lost any of our enameling. Let's rinse it off. That looks pretty good, I think, right? So I would let this thoroughly dry. With certain pieces, I might use a hair dryer to help it along. Uh, obviously not with pearls, opals, etc. right? Not with anything that's really fragile, but metal, you could put a hair dryer to it, but I'll probably just put this on my um, dish drying rack, <laughs> believe it or not, and just let that dry, dry off. Wow, that looks great, I think. Let's take a look at our diamond ring. So we're gonna have to use our toothbrush on this. Now, if I can't get all this stuff out of here, let me do it a little bit closer, I will use um, a toothpick, which I also have, because there is just sort of some, some gunky stuff in here. Diamonds can take it. This is gold and diamonds. I think it's 14 karat white gold. Diamonds are nice, nice and hard on the Mohs scale, right? Rinse it and then see see how we're looking here. Wow, this water is really dirty. I got to show this to you. It's really gross. Here, so is this. Let me flip it over. Let me dry it a little bit. That is much much better. Now I would probably you know stick my loop on and and take a toothpick if I think I missed anything in there. But I think that looks really really great. And again, you know, you could dilute a little bit of Windex and put some on there. I don't usually do that, but, and I could also put this under warm water on my faucet and let the pressure from the water um, take some of this stuff out too. But I think that's looking pretty good. Yeah, I like that. That did a good job. To wipe a little bit of the tarnish off of silver, I like to use this Connoisseur Silver Jewelry Polishing Cloth. I don't know how much I paid for it. It wasn't much, but how it works is this, um, sorry, I've used this a lot, so it's kind of dirty. But this white part, this has like the some sort of stuff in it, a chemical in here that um, actually removes a little bit of that tarnish. And then this purple part or the pink part is the clean part. And that, because you don't want to leave those chemicals on there, you want to wipe that up after you're done. Here's a sterling silver and turquoise bracelet. It's a little baby bracelet or a little child's bracelet. What I might do with something like this, if I'm selling it, you know, either just disclose that it has a lot of patina or tarnish, or I might gently wipe this down just to kind of make it look a little bit cleaner, not to take the tarnish off really, but just to sort of shine it up a little bit. I think this looks 
uh, more attractive than this. And I didn't dip it. You know, if you dipped it, you would lose all the blackness that are in this, that's in these um, recessed areas. So that's how I would handle something like that. Same with this. This is one of my favorite bracelets. I love all this tarnish. Look at it. Oh, it's so cool. But I, I guess I could wipe these a little bit, you know, and just sort of shine those up. I think that might look nice. It, it kind of would give the piece a little more depth, if you know what I mean. So just gently do it with this side of the cloth and then wipe it off afterwards with the pink side. I don't know if you can tell the difference. I can. It just sort of shined up all of these high parts right here and over here it's still dull. These types of things can get tricky because of those marcasites. You know, if I rub a cloth over those, some of those are probably going to fall out. Uh, I actually love the tarnish on this little salamander. This is German. It is sterling. So that one I would definitely just leave. This one I would leave too. I really like this. Maybe not the, the shank part, you know, maybe that could be cleaned up a little bit. So I would just sort of do the shank and leave the rest of it. Here's a necklace that I love. This is turquoise and sterling. This is a Desert Rose trading, I think. I got this a long time ago. Uh, but in this instance, I think that the tarnish on here, there is just no value added. I think that just looks awful. It looks dirty. And um, yeah, I don't like it at all. This one, I would definitely dip. This is what I use. I believe this is available in Walmart. I got this on Amazon, or maybe I got it in Walmart. I don't know. This is liquid. I'm just gonna dip it in there. I'm gonna take a look. There's what it looks like. So it comes with this little sort of washing machine thing where you could put some silver in there, right? If it's hardy enough, and if you're sure you really want it to be bright, bright silver, then you could put it in there. Let's just dip this part right here and see what happens. I'm going to be careful to not get the, the turquoise and the garnets in there too. So I just dipped the bottom part so you can see the difference. Um, let me just sort of dry it out and uh, wipe it up a little bit. Hold on. So this is what silver looks like after it's dipped. Way better, right? I'll continue afterwards and I will do this whole thing because I do want to wear this one this weekend. So that's what your, that's what the dip does. This vintage bracelet is a very cool bracelet. I really like this. Now there is some verdigris here in between these faux pearls. So this one would be very tricky. I do have a video on how to clean verdigris off of jewelry. So generally it is just vinegar. Um, but with something like this, where you have these faux pearls, these are just coated. And if you get vinegar, you can see it right there, it's coming off. If you get vinegar on those, I would think that might eat away the kind of paint or the coating that's on top of these. So I would actually brush some ketchup on here because I can control it a little bit better than liquid vinegar. Of course, one of the biggest ingredients in ketchup is vinegar. That's why it works. And then I would let that sit for a long time. And that's how I would handle that. Here's a great example of a damaged fake pearl. Fake pearls are plastic or glass, and then they just have this coating. You can see it really, really well there. So this is a type of thing we're trying to avoid. Maybe if you soaked this in water, you know, you might, you might get this result. Some of this jewelry is old, so this coating is brittle and dry. The other option, of course, if, if I was going to sell this, which I'm not, but if I wanted to sell this, I would just disclose it, you know, and just say, look, there is some verdigris on the metal parts. That's all. And that way I would avoid the whole thing. So let's take a look at this. Yikes. Look at that verdigris. That is not good. This is an awesome choker though. Look at these. These are glass beads. Oh, these are kind of dirty. Oh dear. Hmm. Let's see if I can get that off with my I'm going to use a little bit of soap maybe too. Yeah, see how that's coming off? Anyway, we could fuss with this and get that all off. But the biggest problem here is the verdigris. Whoa. Soap and water will not take this off. This needs uh, vinegar or ketchup. Let's... um. Let's soak this in a little bit of vinegar and we will see our vinegar in action. Any kind of white vinegar will be fine. What I will do is I'm going to soak 
this paper towel in this vinegar. I'm really going to saturate it and then I'm just going to wrap it there and give it some time and we'll see if we can get all of that off or at least a great deal of it. That's what verdigris looks like. You see it's sort of green and it's caked on and yeah, it's not good. This will actually eat away at the metal over time. This is nice and wet. Just wrap that around there. Let's let that soak for a while. Just for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and lift this up, wipe some off. I didn't really leave it on very long. But that is quite an improvement. Of course, there is, you know, wear to this metal. But it looks like all the green stuff is gone. And that was only just from a couple of minutes being on there. I can take my toothbrush. I'll put a little bit of soap on it. I do want to get that vinegar off for sure. I don't know what would happen, you know, if you just left it on there indefinitely. Probably it wouldn't be good for the metal, I wouldn't think. All right, so let me rinse it off. Let's dry it off. Yeah, it looks like it's gone. It really does. And that's as opposed to this, where it's still green. Big difference, right? This is a great choker. And it says made in Czechoslovakia right there. Cool old piece. So I will do this other end too afterwards and make sure that's all off. Um, look how dirty this water is. Eek. I'm gentle, I'm careful with things that are particularly fragile. I don't even touch those or I barely touch those. Like sometimes you have to. Once in a while, I'll get something like this that's real pearls and there's something on it, like somebody got food on it or something, dried up food. Yeah, we just do the gentlest way first. But you know, if you had to do it, you just have to do it very, very carefully. All right, I hope this was helpful. Hit me up if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will catch you soon. All right, cheers everybody.